Well, hello, Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome to another M0NTV home brewing video. Now, if you're going to build a radio, uh, pretty soon you're going to have to start to get to grips with filters. And, um, and sometimes people are a bit scared of filters because they usually mean winding toroids. So we're going to deal with all that. Um, and actually, they're not as bad as, as you think. Uh, and once you kind of get the knack of them, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a useful thing. And you'll be building filters in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I've been building quite a lot of filters recently. Um, so I thought this would be a good topic to, to do a, a video on. So we're going to tackle three different aspects. The design of the filter, uh, the building of it, and then the testing of it. And uh, and uh, see how we go. Uh, now, the, the filter we're actually going to build is, is a little bit more unusual, actually, because we're going to build a high-pass filter. Now, most of the time when you, you're building radios, uh, you're building low-pass filters, uh, usually if you're building a transmitter just to, to kill off any harmonics um, after your, your power amplifier, or you're building band-pass filters, which, which do a multitude of different uh, uh, jobs uh, in a transceiver. But a high-pass filter is useful if you've got some uh, other signals, maybe some intermodulation stuff going on below that you want to kind of filter out. Uh, and that's what I've got, actually. I'm just trying to clean up uh, the signal going through this rig that I'm building at the moment. So um, what I really want to do is, is filter out everything before the bottom end of the 80 meter band. So everything below the, the 80 meter uh, band, essentially, I want to kind of filter out. Um, so, um, yeah, well, let's get on with it then, and we'll start off with the design. Right, well, the design starts, of course, with a schematic. And uh, there's various ways of doing this. Um, I mean, you can just slog it all out by hand, but um, why reinvent the wheel, I think, really? Uh, there's some very good software. Um, a piece of Windows software that I've used several times is uh, LC, E L S I E, which is a pun, of course, on LC, inductance capacitance. Um, and uh, as I said, that's Windows software, and, and you can design all kinds of different LC filters uh, with that and, uh, and see what they look like, etc., before you actually build them and you can tweak them and stuff. It's, it's very good. Uh, but what I have been using recently uh, is this website, actually, um, rf-tools.com. And uh, I found this to be quite good. Uh, and obviously, this, this works. I, I'm using a Mac here, so I mean, this works on any platform because it's just a website. Uh, now, and you can um, uh, put in here what kind of filter you want. So you can do a band pass or a band stop, like a notch filter. Uh, a low pass or a high pass, which is what we're using. There's different uh, kinds of filters, and you, you can play around with these and see. Uh, the Butterworth one gives you, uh, if you were doing, say, for instance, a, a, a band pass filter, um, the Butterworth will give you a smoother um, uh, kind of pass band. Uh, the Chevy Chev, which is the one we've got here, will give you uh, a, a steeper kind of skirt. Um, uh, to the uh, to the, uh, the the filter, um, but you do get a little bit of ripple in the pass band. Uh, now for um, uh, this high pass filter, the Chevy Chev should be fine. Um, so you can decide whether you want a shunt first or a series first. So I've gone for a shunt first, uh, fifth order. So that just basically means you've got five components in it. And in this case, three three inductors and two capacitors. You put your cut off frequency. Um, whatever you want the ripple to be, I just uh, kept it at, uh, at 0.1 dB, and your output and uh, input impedance. Uh, you, this is quite useful. Uh, I think it, it defaults to exact values, but if you put standard, it'll give you standard values then, uh, which is particularly useful for the uh, capacitors. And just hit compute, uh, and you get something that looks like this. Um, so um, you, now you can see the... Uh, uh, the the scattering uh, parameters here. Um, so the one we're looking at is the is is the S two one. So that's um, if you were looking at this, this is like simulating what you'd see on a on a on a VNA really from from port one to port two. Um, and as you can see, 
uh, I mean, if I put my mouse over it, we might be able to see. Yes, we can. So up here, so we've got 3.4. So, so 3.5, which is the beginning of the 80 metre band, is, is up here. So that's great. Um, and then it rolls off. Now, the, the signal I've got I want to attenuate is, is I think it's about 1.3. I think it's about 1.33, that'll do. Um, and you can see uh, at, at a, well, 1.329 uh, megahertz, uh, there's minus 47 dB of, of attenuation. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so that should well and truly um, uh, push it down into the weeds, as, as they say. Um, so that, that should be fine. That should do us fine. Um, so uh, and that looks pretty good. Uh, now, obviously, this is a simulation, um, and uh, depending on how carefully you build it and, and the precise um, uh, values of the components you use, etc., you know, it'll, it'll be a bit different. Uh, the good thing with with high pass and low pass filters is that they're not as um, uh, fussy as band pass and band stop filters, where you, you they, they can be really uh, uh, fussy things. And maybe I'll do another video, perhaps on a, on a band pass filter, because they're important things. But you can waste a few hours of your life <laughs> messing around with with those. Uh, well, this is fairly simple. I thought it'd be a good one to do first. Um, so now, if you're not familiar with these kind of diagrams, um, uh, essentially th this resistor here and this resistor here don't exist. That this is just a part of the simulation. So that's basically saying there's a there's an input impedance of 50 ohms and the the output load. Uh, as an impedance of, of 50 amps. So the bit you build is just the bit in between those resistors. So as you can see, um, what we've got uh, are three inductors, um, uh, and, and you'll see these two are mirror images of this one. So the, the, the N2 are two microhenries each, and the middle one is 1.2 microhenries. And then uh, two capacitors, both 680 picofarads. So not too bad. Now, once, you, once you've got that, I mean, that's basically most of the work done. Um, now, these are standard values, so these are not too difficult. And if you don't have them, you obviously you can make those values up uh, uh, combining capacitors. But these you, you need to think about a bit more carefully. Um, so uh, now, the, the next thing we're going to do is to work out how we're going to get these values of inductance. So we're going to wind our own and already I'm thinking if if we're down below the 80 meters band the cutting off we're going to be thinking about uh, a type 2 material toroid. Um, if we were higher up, uh, higher up in, in, in frequency say you know um, filtering off stuff below the 20 meter band, then I'd, I'd use the type six, the, the yellow toroid. So we can use the red toroid, the, the type two, um, for this. So so the thing to go to is this site, fantastic site, toroids.info, superb. So, and you can see on the left here, you can, every possible permutation of toroid that you can think of. Um, and mine defaults to, to T50-2. Um, and so, so here we are. So, so it looks a bit confusing here. Or it tells you the kind of free uh, resonant circuit uh, range here, uh, actually. So yeah, we're, we're well within that spec. So all we need to do is just popping back to here for a minute. So let's take this first one, the, the two microhenry, two microhenry. So we're going to go, and assuming we're going to use a, a T fifty dash two, we want to work out how many turns we need. To get two microhenries, so we just put it in uh, two microhenries and hit calculate. So twenty point two. Now, obviously, you can't have point two of a turn. Um, so twenty turns. Uh, now, twenty turns on a on a T fifty two should be fine because it's it's big enough to, to easily get those twenty turns on and still have enough. Um, Kind of gap in between them. I'll say more about that when we actually wind it. Um, so that's fine. Um, the the point two, obviously we can't have point two as I said. But what you can do um, is if you've got a little bit too much um, inductance, if you've got if you've got far too much inductance, you can take a, a turn off. But if you're a little bit too much, 
you can spread them out, spread the turns out a little bit more. Or if you've got not quite enough, but but not enough to, um, you know, put an extra uh, turn on, uh, you can just kind of bunch the turns up a little bit, and that will give you a bit more. So we've got a real bit, little bit of room for manoeuvre is what I'm saying. So so we'll go for that. So we're going to have um, uh, 20 turns then um, uh, for that one. Well, it won't be that one, it'll be those two, it'll be the end two. And let's have a look at this one then. The middle one is 1.2 micro Henry. So let's clear this. Uh, 1.2. Let's see what that works out. Calculate. Now, 15.6. Now, this one's not quite as good. It's one of those in-between ones, really. But uh, So we're going to have to probably go for 16, but being aware that that's probably going to be a bit high. Um, so we may well have to sp spread them out. Um, and when I test it... I mean, I, I sometimes find, actually, that this toroids.info is very good, but sometimes... it. it my my coils, maybe it's me <laughs> or my meter, um, but but they they all seem to read a little higher than this. I always find myself having to kind of take a turn off or something um, rather than the other way round. Um, but but hey, we'll we'll worry about that when we get to it. So we're going to say sixteen turns, sixteen turns um, for that. So um uh, so that's it. So we've got our, our schematic uh, and we know what we've got. Now we've got twenty turns. Uh, on a, on a T52 of those two, and 16 turns on a T52 for that one. Um, so um, uh, let's build it.